Hi, this is Eric from longboxreview.com. Welcome to the show. This is part two of the discussion that I'm having with Damien, aka Sleepy Reader 666 from YouTube, about the wonderful series Danger Club. This episode covers issues three and four, where we covered issues one and two in the previous episode. So let's get right to it. Okay, shall, shall we move on to number three? Yeah, I well, guess just we, the thing that interesting, the, the two issues, the second issue starts with the really disturbing violence and the rest of it is more what you're used to in a comic book. Yes, yeah, I would agree with that. First issue goes the other way around. So it's kind of interesting in these two issues. And then bam, the cover of the third issue is of bod- dead bodies of I think all the characters that we've seen before, or at least it, and or maybe there are other characters, but anyway, just a pile of dead superhero bodies. And and look how dark it is too. Right. It's yeah. Like, it's like they're down in a pit or something. A yeah. Pit well, corpses. But even the colors are are so muted and and dark. You know, lots of dark purples and blues and you know, very different from cover number two. That's for sure. Right. Right. So yeah, the contrast is very noticeable. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, mm-hmm. So issue number three. Let's see. So this is a little, little more stuff going on here. So the character, we find out that the character in the center uh, facing us in, on the cover here, his name is Moonlight. Uh, so Moonlight oh, right. confides in the American spirit. And I think this is where we actually find out that's his name. The, the, the president of the global United States that we saw in the previous issue about what Kid Vic, uh, Vigilante, I almost said victory for some reason, did to Apollo actually had it recorded on his uh, phone or something. Jack, Ladybug, Gravity Girl, Robot 9, and others go to the Empire of Crimes, HQ, and are affected by one of the members of that crime group, uh, Jabberwock, uh, by his illusion machine. Kid Vigilante and Magician go find Apollo, recovering in Greece. So he's not dead, but uh, then end up, taking some of Apollo's blood. Moonlight finds out that American spirit uh, finds out American spirits secret. And I won't go any further than that until we get to it. They don't just take Apollo's blood, by the way, they beat the crap out of him again. They just well, don't yeah. show it this time. <laughs> it's yes. off screen. Yeah. Which, which was kind of nice. So we don't get that repetitive thing uh, going right. on here, but yeah, they don't just always go for the violence. They can put it, Put it off screen when needed. The opening sequence again with the golden or silver age kind of look uh, kind of echoes, now echoes more directly what's going on in the story where it says, I mean, it's not the empire of crime, but our, it says the empire of crime has defeated our mentors and there's nothing we can do to save them, mm-hmm. which is the situation now. Exactly. Although one assumes in this old story, there is a way for them to save them, and they do save them at the end of the story, right, right. As, as classically happens in, in those kinds of comics. And we get the Danger Club Reserves, which is kind of a throwback to the, um, <laughs> the Legion of Superheroes. And the, what are they called? The, the subs, people? the substitute heroes. The substitute yes. Legion of Superheroes. Exactly. I had that in my notes, too. It's like, yes, substitute <laughs> heroes get some, get some, uh, get, gets a call back in a way. And they look even younger. And, and we see their yeah. name, which helps us because Gravity Girl and Moonlight are important in this issue. Uh-huh. Although, we, yeah, so we have uh, the other two are Zoom Zooms. <laughs> <laughs> what a Silver Age name, right? And, and the weird. Right. And I love, I love that, that, that picture of the weird with, with the way his hands are kind of going, <laughs> mm, look, I'm weird. Right, and they all look so happy, like, we can't wait to get our chance to Exactly, be- right? Especially Gravity Girl. She's like, yes, let's go. I love this. I love it. This is going uh, to be so cool. <laughs> Did you want to read that that that, uh, that frontispiece text as oh, again? Oh, sure, sure. Things fell apart quickly. The fear, the panic, the riots. There was no polite force that could handle... No, sorry, no police force. Or polite force, either way. the wave of chaos and terror that had gripped the world. The heroes were gone, leaving us behind. We had trained our entire lives to fight. But where was the enemy? Danger club. Yeah. So so here we do get a little bit of, of back, a back history here. 
with the the police being unable to quell the 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 fear and the the destruction uh, in that in the previous issue when Kid Vigilante takes Ladybug to his the mansion the HQ um, he does mention something about the the, the rioting and, and whatnot and they even got to his place you know his 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 father's place mm-hmm. uh, and and, and yeah. broke it you know broke things and broke in and, and all that stuff so anyway. Uh, so the the story opens after that first page. This is Moonlight talking with the American Spirit, to, you know, telling him stuff. Like right. I said, and they're in the, the Oval Office, I guess. Um, yeah, one presumes so anyway. We, we weren't sure that he was president. Now we're quite sure. Yeah, yeah. Although he seemed like he was president in the last issue, anyway, or very presidential, anyway. Right, and of course now we we've seen what happened in the last issue, so we're pretty nervous for Kid Moonlight, anyway. Yes. yes. And then the, the next page is the group going after the Empire of Crime. I I wasn't sure exactly why they were doing that. Other than, the, so the only thing they say is most of the, the Empire of Crime went into space with the heroes, the ones that are left. And and Jack, this is Ladybug talking, and then Jack says, are useless gimmicky nut jobs. We can get them to help is what Ladybug says. So I, you know, it's a very tenuous situation here that they're they're going into. They're They're going after their enemies to implore them to help i guess right Um, but we've learned that the other enemies did go and help the superheroes whatever the threat was was so great that everyone stopped being good or bad and all went into outer space to fight somebody Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. which is which is a common trope in in superhero comics right so we'll we'll put our 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 differences aside and work together for the greater good until such time as that we can we can right. uh, betray you and double cross and and get our uh, take advantage of the situation. Yeah, uh, Doctor Doom frequently seems to fight alongside the Fantastic Four, for instance. Exactly. Yeah. But when they said and useless gimmicky nut jobs, I was kind of thinking maybe some of you guys are useless gimmicky nut jobs <laughs> too. Yeah, maybe maybe it's maybe it's these. Uh, right now we don't know for sure, but maybe it's these three characters here. And on on the page, the middle one ends up uh, being Gravity Girl, but then the other two, the the one in blue and the one in reddish uh, reddish costume, we don't know who they are, um, right. but yeah. And then the one with the odd symbol on her chest, a kind of perhaps unfortunately placed. I know she reoccurs, but I never caught her name. Which which one are you referring to, Damien? Actually, she's the one who talks and says, "Kid Vigilante, Kid Vigilante trusts me." Oh okay, yeah, that's Ladybug. Oh, that's Ladybug. Okay, yeah. I missed that. Oh, I see. Okay. I see so what you're referring to. Context, she's an ex-villain herself. <laughs> yes. So mm-hmm. it's probably her idea to recruit more ex-villains. Yes. So that makes sense. Right on their side. But okay. but it's like they they must be desperate to do this. Or but Jack definitely doesn't like the situation. He makes that perfectly clear. And not only that, but he you know uh, he says I'm not Kid Vigilante, meaning that he does not trust her. Right. And I think also uh, knowing what we know coming down the the pike, uh, there may be a reason why he doesn't want to recruit even more people into this cause. Right, right. I think I may have just spoiled something with that reveal. And he says, let's go remind these assholes who's in charge. That one stuck out to me just because, I mean, it reinforced what I'm already feeling of superheroes who are kind of thuggish yeah no it's part of it is about enjoying beating up the bad guys Mm -hmm. not just about making the world safe (laughs) um which only makes sense and we get a lot of that in watchmen and stuff but it's still more disturbing to me when coming from a teenage kid (laughs) well okay it also fits being a teenager but i was gonna say though uh if you look at now, it's not quite as overt as this, but if you look at Robin's early adventures when he's fighting the bad guys with Batman, you know, he uh-huh. he's thrown out the the the, uh, the the punny quips and, you know, one liners and uh, just he's having fun beating up these bad guys. But, you know, he's he's having fun doing it. So I, I That's there, there, there's that connection going as far back as when Robin first appeared. Well, the whole morality changed in the Silver Age, and even though I didn't really read much in the Silver Age, but I got it 
that as the base level comic book morality, but the morality in the 40s was quite different. Was superheroes killed people a lot. Well, that's true. And well, until until Robin appeared. When Robin appeared, uh, things turned around dramatically. When Batman stopped killing. Yeah. So but, there you go. There's another reason I love I love sidekicks. They <laughs> they they uh, changed the course of comic book super, superhero comic books. Not always for the better, but but definitely changed the course. So they clean things up. They had they had but, a great impact. <laughs> <laughs> but here that impact's being uh, reversed. <laughs> uh, they so they the, the characters bust into the this this building. I, I like I like this 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 page here, Damien, where where we're shown the the the, the interior of, of this place and they've got They've got the pictures of the villains themselves hung right. up on the wall. <laughs> you know, it's it was very again. Um, right. It reminded me of the new Teen Titans. You know, when 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 they're in Titans Tower and they've got those those full body portraits of themselves <laughs> in right. their own tower. Which, you know, when I was younger, it's like, oh, that's really cool. You know, they got these pictures hung up. And but as I got older and I and I look back on that, I'm like, wow, what what the heck. Why are you so uh, interested in seeing yourselves in your own HQ? Right. So again, it's just it's just one of those those throwbacks to uh, previous comics. It looks like there's even a statue of somebody. Oh, you're right. There is. But there's nobody there, apparently. Uh, well, then we go to Greece and we see um, Apollo in the middle of this glowing ball. And so that's, he's, that's where I said earlier, he's recuperating. Uh, right. You can see him, he's not bleeding. He, he looks like he's physically recovered, you know, he, he sort of looks like he's uh, sleeping in that. And then we see Kid Vigilante put on the moon metal knuckles again and start heading right. towards him. And he says, um, it's his regeneration which makes him useful to us. Mm, yes. So now we see that it wasn't just a vicious, desire to not only defeat him but kill him there was a, a more to the plan that his regeneration was part of the plan the, yes so they had to kill him to get him to regenerate mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. or seemingly kill him and that's a beautifully illustrated page i particularly like that page again yeah the colors you you get to see that like i said it's it's, it's this glowing yellow ball but everything else around it is this white so you get that sense of 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 uh, light going on with that with that that panel that that we're looking at on the video so excellent excellent coloring again uh the following page uh moonlight's talking with the american spirit i think the only thing about this uh that's interesting is uh, moonlight says i don't know oh wait so uh let me back up uh american spirit says and after your little friends did they choose to follow this self-proclaimed uh, proclaimed savior Referring to Kid Vigilante and Moonlight right. says, I don't know. Uh, I could try to find out. And he says, uh, American Spirit says, no need. You see, I already know what will happen. Right. And now we're back to that sort of, not completely, but sort of uh, a back and forth by page storytelling technique. Right. Let's see here. So the characters in the Empire of... of what is what they say? Evil is it evil? I, I'm I'm getting confused here. Empire of crime was it? Crime. Thank you. Crime. Uh, <laughs> I don't know why I keep thinking it's evil. They they rem they remark about hearing this buzzing. One of the characters says mar marbles. Oh, referring to the the character. So Ladybug goes up to this character who's bleeding, looks like he's dying on on the floor, and that's marbles. And so so that that must be that must be marbles playing in Vigilante's cave. That we saw earlier. Oh, you're right. The same or, may, or maybe he, or maybe Marble's um, mentor. If this is a sidekick, I don't know. That, that makes a lot of sense, though. Or, but and, and a villain named Marbles does sound like a gimmicky super yeah. villain. Maybe oh, yeah, have much impressive powers going on. Yeah, it, remind, it reminded me of like you know like Calendar Man, Batman's uh, Calendar Man, or you know any basically any any Batman villain. Now here he, Marble, she asks her what happened and he says it was them, but I can't tell what he's pointing at. Is he pointing at the superheroes? Yeah, I had, I had the same the reaction. Superheroes? 
I had the same reaction. I wasn't sure because because if you follow the course of his, you know, the the way his finger is pointing, it looks like he's pointing at the painting, but the heroes are standing there in the foreground. So I, I'm not entirely sure. At that point, I, I wasn't entirely sure. One where the colorist kind of let us down because if the <laughs> coloring had been different, it might have indicated what highlighted mm. what he's actually pointing at. What the focus is, yeah, perhaps. I mean, that's being very picky, but yeah, yeah. in any case, that's why I can't figure out. And I don't know if it's very significant, really. Well, in the next in the next scene, uh, or the next not the next page, but the page following, we do find out what he really what he's pointing at or what he's referring to, uh, which is the heroes, because then ladybug attacks jack yeah. fearless right so i but at the same time you see that that same painting on the wall right. which is which Clearly ends up being jabberwock and, it, and the eyes are glowing so again i i was still a little confused but it's it seems that not seems um they're under some sort of influence here but I want to back up uh, to the previous page where Moonlight's talking to American Spirit. Uh, he says, "I uh, American Spirit says, I've been given a rare gift. I'm old, far older than you'd think, but I remember. And I remember everything, everything that has ever happened, everything that has no longer happened, everything. What do you think of that? Well, I can't recall what I thought before I knew what was coming later because <laughs> <laughs> it's been three years <laughs> but so, it's yeah, really with hindsight i think i think i must have just thought that he had some kind of evil control over the world but i didn't i mean the second time i read it of course i knew exactly what he was talking about right it, it but it was a curious thing that stuck out to me uh both times i read it it's like what does that mean everything that has no longer happened. So I was wondering, um, you know, first of all, how how long lived is this guy? What what uh, what guises has he taken on over those years? And this is is this just a, another in a long list? You know, is is he basically the Vandal Savage of this universe? Right, right. And again, we get that close up of, of his mouth with the missing tooth, and he's got saliva there. There's another missing tooth that we didn't see before. It's just like really so that we talk about how visceral this book is you you get that even with things that aren't ultra violent you mm -hmm. get the, the the panels of these these characters and their mouths and it's just like it's just kind of icky <laughs> it's kind of gross i just popped into my head but since we're playing with young teenagers as our heroes then their their antagonist is the most gruesomely old person you can imagine right. good point i hadn't, I hadn't made that connection and and yeah. And the feeling when you're a teenager that there's no connection between you and and el, el old age. You don't. <laughs> you think you're too good of a person to ever become like that, <laughs> just right. on a physical level, right? right? When you're a teenager, you think somehow the old people deserve their fate, or at least that's how I remember. <laughs> they sort of somehow allowed themselves to become these hideous old creatures. And there's that old, remember the, the, in the, the 60s, there was that old don't trust anyone over 30 type thing when you were right, younger. Right. So, and this, uh, this guy is obviously older than 30. Right. And you should not trust him. <laughs> <laughs> Even more so because he's so old, yeah. So we're, again, we're, we, we talked about this already, but uh, back to the, and the Empire of Crimes place. I just want to point out, um, Gravity Girl says, she's looking off into the distance uh, and saying, Mom? What happened to you? We don't see exactly what she's seeing yet, but like I said, we see the the painting of Jack. What, what it turns out to be Jabberwock. His eyes are glowing. The next page was really chilling when I got to this. You see that the this character with these almost, I want to say, insect like or maybe reptilian like hands because they're really the fingers are really long, right? And and kind of pointy. Mm -hmm. So it, it was really odd and then you get that close-up of of again there's the mouth the close-up of the mouth right hideous see, teeth yeah you see the monitor so this guy is watching what's going on he's enjoying it he's got this big smile on his face or so we think be interesting to know if uh eric jones has a particular fear of going to the dentist perhaps <laughs> <laughs> 
Oh my God. You just gave me uh, the, the, the tweet for this. Does Eric Jones fear dentists? Tune in. Uh, so we get more, more of the, this one character. I don't know the name of the character monsters. All of you hiding under the skin. I should, ne should never have trusted you starting to, that one character is going to, is going to attack robot nine Jack because of his cybernetic qualities. He, he removes the eye patch. This is the first time you see this. And underneath his eye patch is this cyborg guy is what I thought of it. Yeah. I thought of it that way too. He's looking around. You get you see you see it from his viewpoint on this bottom panel. There's all the red, the reddish looking yeah, quality. It looks like he has infrared vision, so he can see th heat, which means he can see through walls if if right. there's warm behind the wall. And we only see the characters that went in with him. There's no one else there. Right. Uh, back to uh, vigilante and the magician and Apollo. We see vigilante extracting Apollo's blood. Uh, after he's been beaten again by a vigilante, like you mentioned before, thankfully we don't get to see that that scene repeated. Right. Uh, but again, Apollo is bloodied and and bruised and uh, and bleeding. Uh, vigilante gives the 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 syringe to magician, and he goes off. And tellingly, magician says, "Remember how it used to be: beat the bad guys, they get put in jail, and the city holds a parade for us." To which Vigilante responds, we're saving the world, reiterating, right. you know, the, the sense, the, the the impending doom that they have to conquer right. here. So, in other words, I took that to mean the ends justifies the means to Vigilante. And Magician is the part of me, feels like the part of me that likes those opening Silver Age pages. Yeah, yeah. he's He, he definitely comes across as the, the perhaps, not, not the most, but one of the more... Uh, innocent characters here right. i mean despite the fact that he does engage in battle with 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 characters i don't recall i'd have to go back and look but i don't recall seeing when he's attacking people that he's necessarily brutal to anyone like we've been like we've seen kid vigilante and jack fearless for that matter right. um as, but as we'll find out he's not the most innocent one and uh, that takes a bad turn for that character Again, uh, back to the scene with uh, American Spirit. So he says, it's a little secret just between us, you understand. Uh, talking about the, the heroes that their mentors that have been out in space and haven't returned yet, they're right. not lost in space. They weren't killed by the cosmic being descending upon us. They're here, right where they have been for months. And he gets... American spirit who gets closer and closer to moonlight grabs the back of his head and, and is looking particularly uh, vicious here right. in the panel. Again, his teeth are at the center yeah. of the image. Oh God. Yeah. And he, and he whispers in, in moonlight's uh, ear right where they've been since the day I killed them. Whoa. What a reveal. Although yeah. you maybe could have guessed, something was up with this character just based on the way he had been shown previously. Right. Uh, in the meantime, we're getting but, that. Uh, can I pause there and oh, just say, yeah. for me, this was a flipping moment because I just thought, I believed that they were trying to gather forces to fight some alien invasion in outer space. And now I realize that's not what's happening at all. There is exactly. no alien invasion in outer space. The, the big bad that I was thinking was looming over everything is, is something completely different. And much closer to home, yeah. Right. Yeah, so the story is that, that we thought we were getting is totally inverted now. Uh, everything is topsy-turvy. And we're, we're going off into a, a new direct, slightly new direction at least, yeah. But at the same time, uh, I love the thematic um, juxtaposition of what Moonlight is experiencing here with American Spirit and the increasing uh, focus on Gravity Girl. There's right. there's three panels here. One is where it's completely white and she just she's on her knees saying, Mom, and there's this character in front of her, presumably her mom, but it's all white. And then we get back to, you know, reality and there's the battle going on around her. She's, and she's screaming at her mother, why won't you say something? And at the very bottom, it's, why did you leave me? And she's got tears coming down her, uh, down her face. Just, uh, just that, that 
that scene just broke my heart. As much as as much as the scene with American Spirit and Moonlight unnerved me, uh, that scene with Gravity Girl is just like, oh man. So you get you get the you get these two gut punches on the same page. Right. So very effective. Uh, the next scene is uh, Jack Fearless. He's had enough with his cyber cybernetic arm. He slams his fist down, causing, I guess, the fight to stop in some way. We're not. I'm not. It's not really shown. Yeah. Or maybe but... his punch actually brings down the wall, the ceiling. Or I guess it, not. Just a beam. Yeah. It looks like. Yeah. There's some destruction there, but it's it's. This is one of the the, the few times I think that what were shown could have been done a little better so that we understand the scene a little more. Yeah. The, at least what's going on in the scene. Well, I think it was just so cool to show him hitting the ground. Like yeah. That. It, it, it's a wonder. Back, yeah. Even though it wasn't clear what the other characters were, how the other characters were affected by his. Yeah. yeah. But definitely a, a, a cool singular image, but right. still from a storytelling standpoint, I, I felt it was a little weak. Jack blasts the picture of Jabberwock goes through the wall and then finds Jabberwock there. And here's another nice reveal. This, this issue is just full of them. Here's Jabberwock and his throat is slit. Right. So, so he's his dead. his power works even when he's dead. Well, he does, uh, Jack does say something later about um, he had an automated death trap, some crazy mind stuff when he's talking to Kid uh-huh. Vigilante. But I he had did- assumed the American spirit left his body there and hooked up a camera to go through the painting, but... Yeah, who knows? Well, that that's a good point. Yeah. Why? Yeah. Why wouldn't he? Right. L- although, although use, no, use the corpse that still has the power in it to make a trap for anybody coming to investigate. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I don't know. That, that that's not important whether or not he's the one who did it. But that was just my right, my personal interpretation. So Jack Jack destroys the machine. Everything stops. In the meantime, Moonlight is backing away from American Spirit going, oh, oh, God, why? And then we get a, a lot of things. So we got that. We go back to Jack. He's talking to Kid Vigilante, explaining the situation. Kid Vigilante uh, is there. Apollo is whispering, it doesn't matter how many times you kill me. Uh, Jack says, who did this to them? Meaning the dead supervillains. Right. Right. So we just get these quick cuts as we get closer to the end of this issue. We start getting uh, more and more of these quick cuts of these various scenes going on, uh, increasing the pace and and the uh, the intensity of the situation here. And and as to to answer Moonlight's question about why American Spirit says because I want to live forever and very soon I shall. Right, but since that was an intercut with who did this to them, I assume that it. That he did it to them. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I I took that as well. That that's, that seems fairly clear that that American Spirit definitely is behind this. Although, Kid, of course, Kid Vigilante um, may be in the dark, but he says I have some theories, <laughs> answering the question, even though it's already been uh, answered for us to some degree. And then, uh, basically, oh, okay. So here here we get the. The final gut punch of, of of the book of this issue, Gravity Girl is still on the floor crying. Jack says, "Hey, it's cool. It, it was it was illusions, mind control stuff. You know, you're all right." And uh, refers to her by name, Cindy. So he knows he knows this girl more than just through her superhero moniker. Uh, at the same time, we're getting the juxtaposition with Moonlight, and he says, "No, I'm sorry, please." And he's 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 screaming up at American Spirit. And and you can see in those scenes everything's going whiter and whiter or, or lighter in any case, you know. So what what the heck's going on there? Right. And then you turn the page. Oh, I've, I'm sorry. At the at the very bottom of that page, Gravity Girl starts to stand up. Her hands are glowing, and she says, "I it's too much, Jack." And the final page is is the two panels showing uh, moonlight getting even lighter. And you can see his his face. It's all. It's like it's like his his. I don't, I'm not sure quite sure how to take that, Damien. His uh, life force is being sucked out. Possibly, yeah, because it does look like he's getting thinner in right. his face. Right. So that that's that. And, that and makes we had the, the what's his name? I suddenly forgot the name of the old guy. Um, American Spirit. 
Marian Spirit saying, because I want to live forever. So my yeah. first thought is like an energy vampire type of situation, but yeah. it may be something else. Right. And then, and then, but more importantly to me, at least is, is this right. scene where gravity girls, like everything that I, that's happened, I just, and then, Oh God, this, that, this just, this breaks my heart. This scene, uh, this panel here with gravity girl, I miss mm -hmm. my mom. And then splat. And it's, Good to point out, I think, that Gravity Girl looks extremely young. Yes. She really does, again, look 11 or 10. Even. I was going to say, yeah, 10 or 11 tops. Um, Just to, I, yeah, imagine. Yeah. So my, my, my granddaughter is 11 years old, mm -hmm. and I can't Im can imagine <laughs> her handling the situation uh, as Gravity Girl has done so far. Right. I mean, just... Granted, you know it's it's superhero fiction, so we 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 kind of take uh, for granted the conceits that these characters are emotionally able to handle this kind of stuff. Right. So it was nice to see that to show that this character, how young this character is, and how she's unable to process. It's horrible that she you know she kills herself, but um, it does it does really lay the foundation for. Um, just how awful things are and how they affect these, these kids, they're kids. We cannot forget right. that these are kids. Well, and it's, it's at this point where, you know, the little dim switch in my brain flipped and I thought, you know, is on lo some level, is this book about child abuse or if not that children in wartime mm, good, and the good pressures idea. of wartime on children and war is obviously awful for anybody, but, um, well, and there has been that over the years, I've seen various people talk about, you know, putting a more realistic spin on on teenage sidekicks in superhero comics. It's like if 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 Batman and Robin were in the real world, the authorities would be on him for child abuse abuse, uh, you know, in no time. I, I'm sure that they've they've commented on this in various stories over the years as well. I think they may have he may have even done that in the all-star Batman and Robin from Frank Miller many years ago. Right. It was a direct, something directly referenced in that story. And with Damien, I mean, he's kind of an abused child, but not abused by Batman, but by Talia Agul. Um, Dam Damien Wayne. Damien Robin. Damien not, Wayne. Yeah. Not you. Not me, yeah. I <laughs> by Talia Agul that I can remember. I may have blanked the experience out. <laughs> um, oh, jeez. <laughs> But yeah, it just, I mean, I feel like we're seeing one child being consumed by an, a grotesque aged man who wants to live forever and the other child commits suicide because she can't deal with whatever it is her memories of her mom right. um, brought on by this adventure that they're having. Um, so it's really tough stuff. Really uh, got a lot of gut punches. Yeah, this would. Yeah, just this issue. Uh, I just I think had the most uh, emotionally battering situations out of all the issues uh, that we're going to talk about today. Yeah, I, I did have a final comment about this issue that kind of confounded me. So mm -hmm. if if the American spirit needed to kill the heroes. I'm assuming he he did this he did to the hero the mentors the old the adult heroes what he did to Moonlight. Um, why so then why didn't he also gather all of the sidekicks in in a similar fashion to take them out? It seems like a, right. a plot hole of some sort. That's true. Maybe it's a a mistake he made, or maybe I don't know. Or maybe, maybe he, he thought didn't. he had enough power, but he didn't. It turns out, or yeah. Maybe he didn't think that they could affect his plans, so he just focused on taking the taking down the power houses. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't. Yeah, I don't really know. That does seem like a possible plot hole. But you know, if you think about it, most plots couldn't exist without some kind of hole in the logic that allows the plot to happen. <laughs> well, there are definitely conceits that we just accept and, right. and move on. Yeah. 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 Okay. Uh, shall we move on? Uh, do you have any final thoughts about the issue or shall we move on to? I think final? that was my final thought about the, okay. the child abuse in terms of that issue. And then 
the next issue, I think when I picked it up off the stands, I kind of dreaded it at this point. <laughs> and, and, and why is that? Well, we see this gruesome cover and we've already been through all this stuff. And that then reminds you that two issues ago, we actually saw this character killed. Right. So what we're seeing on that cover is Kid Vigilante, a close up of Kid Vigilante's face. And so I, I'm doing this for yeah, the. Sorry, I was not thinking about the audio. Yeah, the, the uh, audio audience. And he, it's bloody. He's bloody. He's bleeding from his mouth from again from another eye, the, uh, the other eye this time. But he's bleeding from all these places. His nose is kind of crunched up. You notice that on the bridge of his nose, it's kind of right. yeah. like, kind of like it's nose know, squished up or something. Time. Yeah. Uh, his lips and, are swollen. Yeah, right. it's gruesome. It is gruesome, he and you're right. Swelling around his eyes through his mask. Yes. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah, definitely. But yeah, we are reminded. <laughs> yeah. Oh, wait, this character got shot in the head. What's going to happen? And that's not simple stylized blood. It, it's, yeah, blood is messy and gets everywhere kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, right. So again, that visceral quality, I, I just, you know, I, I imagine, God, how how icky and sticky and, ah. Yeah. I, I, I'm not a guy that like faints at the sight of blood or anything. I don't mind getting my blood drawn, but it's this, this bothered me. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, did you want to go ahead and read that, that frontispiece piece again? Oh, sure. Sure. Um, for decades, our world had been under the rule of one man, an absent leader who had long since abandoned his responsibilities to his people. It is said that he had once been a champion of justice, his legend and inspiration for generations of heroes to come. So that's kind of a fill in on this character we already have learned about, but right. don't know. The very heroes who would step forward to protect the world in his absence. But the, does that sentence track? His legend and inspiration for generations of heroes to come, I see. The very hero. So, the guy who became president but then really didn't do very much was the inspiration for the next generation of heroes who were the heroes who were the adult heroes um who are now missing the very heroes who would step forward to protect the world in his absence the heroes were gone and our president could no longer be trusted danger club so did you take that to me so the 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 very heroes who would step forward to protect the world in his absence so is is this a direct reference to you know, like captain america gone missing in world war ii and he was frozen in the, in the ice for so many years before the avengers found him do you think it's are they, are they really going to that degree in that explanation i don't know because they kind of make it seem like he's become the immortal president of the world who just sits back and doesn't police the world and so superheroes who are originally inspired by him are now the people who police the world. That's my interpretation. Yeah, it's kind of a weird circular logic type right. thing. Maybe that's not the best way to put it. But but that fir that first or the paragraph before the one I just read is so he's he he's an inspiration. Oh no no the, the the two paragraphs. So yeah so so we go from one time period forward in time backwards more in time in the third paragraph right. so it is kind of weird that construction it is kind of confusing but anyway yeah, it seems a little more than they need to make him to be this absent leader or they could just say he's been president for the last eight years or something and i think the story would still be valid yeah yeah anyway uh, uh so we get again our this will be the final uh uh silver age ish page of the issue uh, or for the issues we're talking about and we get kind of like this, I don't know, it harkens back to not romance comics, but right. but um, maybe comics more geared towards girls back in the day. Yeah, unfortunately, they tended to show girls crying on the cover. Yes, comics. exactly, exactly. I mean, usually it had to do more with, uh, right. with a boy. He doesn't um, know I love him and she's yeah, crying yeah. in the foreground. But in this uh, case, it's daddy will always love her more. Yes. Because yes. she has superpowers. So I think right. it is a cross-pollination between the romance trope and the sidekick trope. And obviously there, there's a connection here between the two characters that were shown, the, the Wonder Wizard with the guy with the top hat and then the sister, which is Samantha. They have red eyes. And uh, right. so does Magician when he uses his powers. Now, it's a bit confusing. Is Samantha Magician's mother? Or what? Do, what's their relationship here to Magician? The, the girls or magician? Which one are you talking about? Well, 
So we have the boy sidekick magician who's been a regular character with us, right? Right. Um, but here we have Wonder Wizard and Samantha Sorceress. So there's oh, yes. no sign of magician, but they seem to be similar to magician. Mm -hmm. And they also seem to be African-American, which magician seems to be. Right. So I, I see you're going, yeah. supposed to be a connection to magician, but I couldn't figure that one out. Right. But but we do get that in this issue that 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 is cleared up. But however, we with did. this particular okay. with this panel um, yeah. it is unclear. I had the same thought. I was like, well, is where? Yeah. Where does magician fit into this this hierarchy here? This this relationship. And then down below, we we get American spirit in his youth and his fighting right. fit uh, fighting fitness there. Right. Uh, set during World War II, because he's he's over in Japan. Because you got the rising sun in the background there, right. and he's like, uh, "How's it going in Berlin, Jackie?" Right. And Jackie's there with with a ticking time bomb. Not so good, spirit. So when I first read this, I'm like, "Is that is that Jack's father or grandfather?" That was my first thought. Yeah, and I can't remember whether the issue. This issue reveals the actual case, or is that it comes later? Yeah, I, I don't remember either. So we'll, we'll, I guess we'll figure, find out. I, uh, I, in one of the articles I read that I'm going to come back to, it is, it, it very clearly reveals this situation. And again, I'm glad I did not encounter that article uh, before I read the these issues. Right. Oh, I forgot to do the the synopsis real quick. Uh, it, there's not much. There's really not much that goes on plot wise in this this issue, but. Uh, this is what I, I interpreted it as. Uh, so Magician injects himself with Apollo's blood and goes into this other space. Uh, we'll talk about the particulars of that. Uh, meanwhile, American Spirit attacks Kid Vigilante's team, bringing us back to where issue number two started. So that's... I didn't want to go into a lot of detail with that one. Right. So this issue opens up with Magician... He's, it looks like he's on a pier. Yeah, he's on a dock out here going out in the ocean. He's talking on his phone, leaving a message for his mother. And then the rest of the narration in, in, the, in the boxes, that, the narration boxes that we see throughout the rest of this issue involving Magician is that message played fully. Right. Uh, uh, overlaid by the, the events leading up to the, the ending. So he injects himself with it. And here, okay, here's the, I got to find my notes for this. Yeah, here they are. So this is the first time that we encounter magicians saying a magic word. And the magic word, well, I assume what is a magic word. And it is, and I'm probably mispronouncing it because it's the, it has, a, it has, a, it has a, the word is, is, is um, based on Greek. Uh, Apocatastasis is what I want to call it. Yeah, I guess and, I wouldn't know. I didn't even attempt to pronounce it in my mind when I saw it. <laughs> well, I had a hard time with it. I even looked up the the uh, the pronunciation guide for that word, and that's probably the closest approximation that I can make to it. So, um, if anybody knows if it's how it's actually supposed to be, uh, and it's said, real let us know. Word. It's it's based in Greek. Yeah, uh, let me let me come back to that in a second. But as soon as he says that, you get this splash page of of the magician here. And this energy or fire, well, it's it's kind of everything. There's energy and there's looks kind of smoky and there's kind of electricity coming out of his fingertips. So this 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 energy surge is coming out of him uh in, in some sense. Okay, so uh let's go back to the magic word. So apocatastasis, which when I first read this series, I didn't even bother trying to figure out what that meant, but it I plays such a big role later on in the second half that I wanted to find out what, what this means. So, uh, like I said, it's Greek and it is, it means reconstitution, restitution or restoration to the original or primordial condition. That, that's, that's uh, one of the definitions. So, so that, that plays an important role coming up. Uh, the next couple of pages we get kid vigilante is now back with Jack fearless. Uh, getting the band back together. They're talking about what just happened. Fearless is saying, he looks really defeated in here on this panel. You know, he's slumped over, his jacket's off. Right. Uh, look, and look at his, you, you look at his jacket and it's all bloodied. Right. 
So he's he's I take this to mean he's he's reacting to what he just what he just witnessed, especially with Gravity Girl. Gravity Girl. You act like you know everything, but you don't. This is Jack talking to Kid Vigilante. The heroes might have died driving the thing back. They might still be fighting. You tell us we're screwed and everyone listens because you're you. Red Vengeance is... Red, ah, say that five times fast. Red Vengeance's <laughs> sidekick, the world's smartest teen, in quotes. Uh, and uh, to which Vigilante responds, I have a plan. I know what's going to happen. So that's a reoccurring theme between, especially between Vigilante and, right. and the American spirit, that I know these things. Uh, I know what's going to happen. I know what's happened. But uh, we are at this, I'm at this point thinking Kid Vigilante is wrong. He doesn't know what's going to happen. And we know because we've seen his brains get blown out. Exactly. The previous issue. And or, Jack knows that he's going to be blowing his brains out and is that he's a betrayer of Kid Vigilante. And that is informing everything he says to Kid Vigilante. I was thinking while reading this. Yes, exactly. Before we get to the, the, that reveal, though, the, um, the, the, the further conversation between the two, Vigilante says, we have one chance. That's it. Just one. I need to know, are you with me? So undercutting that, that, uh, that betrayal. And, and later, so a couple pages later, they're, they're in their jet or whatever it is. They're, they're, they're heading out. Vigilante says, we have, referring to all the other people that haven't showed up, all the other heroes, like it from the, the, the first issue, they haven't shown up. They're staying out of our way. That's good enough. We have everyone we need. And then the next panel is showing Jack Fearless, next two panels, uh, over, overlaid with, with Vigilante saying, everyone we can trust. And Jack is looking down and he looks a little, a little wary uh, and, and guilty. Know, guilty. Thank you. That I was trying to think of the right word. Worrisome, but he's looking down at this, this uh, old military phone, which I think we saw in that, that first page, right? Yeah. Cause uh, Jackie yep, the only, same uh, phone. has the same phone. So, <laughs> same phone. Wow, so wait a minute. Is, is Jack fearless? This guy from world war two as you know, going along in the timeline uh, wearing uh, dog tags, dog tags. Yeah. So I thought that was interesting anyway. Of course we do find out he, I just, I'll just reveal it. He is the, he is the same guy. It is the same right. guy. Um, but he's but been that, frozen in time for some period of time. Yes, like exactly. America, and I guess Bucky. But before that, so again, we're going back to that, that two page uh, split story, storytelling technique. Because we uh, we have a scene here with uh, the magician. He's he's in that space. You know, it's all reddish and purplish and yellow. We see this these bubbles, these yellow bubbles, and we're seeing. He sees himself in, uh, injecting himself with Apollo's blood. So he's seeing the past. So is he in some sort of uh, time outside of time space? And he touches or that he bubble. What's that? I'm joking. I said, or is he just tripping? <laughs> well, there, yeah, there's that. We're seeing someone inject themselves and then have hallucinations. In, on one yeah, the, the out of body experience, like yeah, exactly. I yes, I've I've heard of those. I've heard of those experiences. Uh, uh -huh. Don't do don't do drugs, kids. Um, okay, uh, but he <laughs> he touches that bubble and it just kind of uh, bursts apart and floats away. I'm like, wait a minute, does. So if, if, if it is indeed what I'm thinking that, uh, he is outside of time and he's seeing a past event, did he just directly affect it in some way, but he's still here. So it wasn't like he negated that event, but what does that mean? So that's, that's, that was my thought process as I was reading this. Yeah, I have to say, I did not really get that much out of magician's journey here either time I read it. Well, if you look the next time we see him, he's seeing more events that we've seen. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So that, that to me, that accentuated that he's somehow outside of time and seeing these, these uh, things. See, I didn't even pick up on that. I just thought he was, it was, I thought it was just comic book stuff where he's, we're showing stuff that's happened. And this is where, so this page here where that we're referencing is showing uh, all these past events. So you see 
uh, Kid Vigilante with the, the moon metal knuckles. You see him crying when we talked about uh, him revealing his name to Ladybug. You see Insectra. You see Ladybug, him pulling that USB stick or whatever it is. Apollo there. Gravity Girl. And Yo Yoshimi at the bottom. And then down at the corner there, you see what I, who I presume is Red Vengeance. And I, and I assumed is him maybe hooking up Kid Victory into that stasis tube. But it, it was an odd addition of of that particular time bubble because we'd ne we had not seen that character or that event thus far, whereas everything else on that page is something that we have seen before. True, true. That is a good point. I'm not sure if that really means anything. It's just, but it does call attention to itself. To the very careful reader, because I don't think I was that careful. First <laughs> well, time. and the second time I it was, it, from it, it, that was me in the second <laughs> time. I think I saw that and went, okay, the, he's seeing these things. So let's let's move on with the story. But uh, yeah, I go, think, especially in my first read, I just saw this as kind of mumbo jumbo magic stuff and i was focused on what's happening with kid vigilante and jack mm -hmm, mm -hmm. well that, that does the the stuff with vigilante and jack does seem more important in some fashion in this particular issue i i would agree with that damien this is where we find out uh more of the familial relationships between magician and the the, the, the characters we saw on the first page because this is um Aunt Sam came to me. So Sam is short for Samantha. Oh, right. Uh, I know why you hate her, but she's your sister. So there you go. So uh, Wonder Wizard is Magician's grandfather. Right. And so her his mother was the one who didn't have the superpowers. Right, right. Which is why he had to hide his superpowers from his mother because yes. she was traumatized. Yeah. We go back to Vigilante and the group on the ship, and uh, Ladybug's like, "Hey, how are we? What's the plan of attack?" We la uh, last I heard, the guy was untouchable, meaning the American spirit. He uh, Vigilante says, "We're not going to attack him. We don't need to. The American spirit will be here with his army in thirty seconds, right, Jack?" <laughs> and Jack and you and the panel. What you see is we see uh, Vigilante from the backside. And in the foreground, Jack is standing up and he's got his, his laser pistol or whatever it is in his hand. And then that's when uh, American Spirit's uh, battleship, uh, it's, it's like a helicarrier type thing. Right. Straight out of the field. <laughs> yep. Yep. He, he says to open fire on the ship. Uh, Jack is uh, pointing his gun at Vigilante, says, it's done, Andrew. And Vigilante says, I know. And he shoots. He shoots at him. I'm coming home, he says to Skybase One. I'm coming home. He shoots. So that cuts away. The, there's a battle scene. This was the point for me where I was quite sure that that he was the sidekick of the American spirit, that he yeah. was Jackie, the Jackie being referred to. Yeah, I, I agree. That I, I, That's when I made that connection, clearly then. Right. That's when I was sure. Uh, in the meantime, magician is coming up again, up, up to this other bubble, and I, I, when I looked at it, I tried to to tell what was in that bubble, if it meant anything. So you know, I'm looking for all these connections, and there there's this uh, kind of formless blobs, darker blobs in there. I can't. Right. I don't. It's pretty formless. It's yeah, hard to... I I don't. So that must, I, I'm wondering if if that meant anything, or if it was just the artist's way of showing like a like a, a particular shine to it, or I don't know, some sort of reflective thing. I don't I don't know. Yeah, I think I almost viewed it as a sunspot or something. <laughs> yeah, exactly, something like that. But yeah, you know, so on the second read, of course, I'm looking for things right. here, the uh, for particular meaning and connections, and and so. I don't think it really means anything. Is I, I think he's just came traveling to. through some mag magic cosmos, and they're using visually. He's traveling through these bubbles of light, which are the same color as the explosions that are taking down uh, Kid Kid Vigilante's Quinjet. That was the Avengers jet for <laughs> years. There you just, go. Just like it. But. <laughs> 
That's true. They are the same color. Hmm. So I just thought it part in part anyway was a visual juxtaposition. Hmm. But but we we don't see that these spheres with magician are explodey yet in any way. Right. So I was thought it was a. Uh, uh, one looks peaceful and one looks violent, and yet the colors are the same. Okay, that yeah, that that that's a good juxtaposition. And so I just right? thought it was an interesting artistic juxtaposition. Yeah, okay. I don't know if they're trying to tell us anything about it. Mm. The ship is going down. Ladybug's freaking out. We need to a counterattack, evade something. And Kid Vigilante says this: "It doesn't matter what we do. We're not going to win this fight. Now brace yourself for impact and listen to what I have to say." And at this point, I'm thinking. This kid is out Batmaning Batman. Yeah, he is. He is beyond. He's Batman's ideal self in a way, in terms <laughs> of strategy guy. Yeah, yeah. Uh, he also has a hole in his lower shoulder, I guess you'd call it, or upper pectoral, and um, where he, I guess has been shot by uh, Jack, but we don't know where Jack is now, I don't think. So well, I thought, oh no, he's in outer space. I mean, he's falling through the sky fighting with Robot 9. Yes, and then we see, the, see the, the hole in the, uh, the Vigilante's hole. chest. Which, right. how can this kid <laughs> function with, with such a gaping yeah. hole in his chest, right? Yeah. That's that's what I mean by he's I, out. In, I in, wonder in if he was he's out Batman and Batman. Kind of gun that wasn't even i don't know didn't even go all the way through or something but anyway he he is uh tougher than tough yeah and then the definitely. spaceship finally crashes on the surface of the helicarrier not the spaceship but the quinjet or the airplane that they're flying where jack seems to have defeated robot nine it sure looks that way yeah and, and how we get little flashes of magician heading close to what looks like a sun, but probably is something else. Yeah, he. I think that's the same bubble that I referred to. He just gets closer and closer to it, and and of course, our the visual of the bubble is we're only seeing a tiny portion of it now because, of course, we're going to get a big reveal in a minute. The fight goes on 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 the 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 carrier whatever kid right. vigilante bursts out of the. In the, another Batman kind of move. Yeah, exactly, right? Uh, he's fighting against everybody. He's getting shot. Uh, this goes on for four pages, essentially, this fight. Yeah, I, we should be doing more visuals. There's that Batman move I was talking about where he bursts through the glass window. <laughs> yeah. He takes down lots of the goons or soldiers of the uh, Liberty guy. I keep forgetting his name. The American Spirit. Yep. Superior numbers do win out usually in fights like this, no matter right. how much of a superhero you are, and you get lots of blood. <laughs> lots of, yeah, lots of beating, lots of blood. He's and, being hit with kind of mace, maces, I guess, kind of high tech maces. Yeah. Which should ruin his dental work forever. <laughs> I think that's and a that's least of his problems. <laughs> at the very bottom of the page, we see the magician guy doing something magical to the giant sun like thing. And then, okay, then the next page, they're defeated. They're putting uh, Vigilante in handcuffs. And I thought this was particularly brutal. Um, he uh, Vigilante calls out to Ladybug. And the way that it's constructed, it was kind of odd to me. But if you, if you put the dialogue boxes together, it makes sense. But he says Ladybug. And then the guy, the soldier, just slams the butt of his rifle again, up against Ladybug's face. Blood spews out. Uh, she cries out, no, but then he, uh, Vigilante says, don't worry, I have a plan. Coughs up some blood or spits out some blood. And he says, I always have a plan. And then we get, we get. I won't show the next, the next thing I want to talk about, but then we get Jack coming up to Vigilante. Knowing what we know, we think he's wrong. This seems like the end in a yeah, way. Yeah, it does. thought he had a plan, but we know already he's going to get killed okay. if we put issue two. Yes, exactly. And then the big reveal, that big, the, the big glowing bubble that Magician is dealing with is all of the heroes that disappeared, gaping in fear or screaming in fear, perhaps, 
at, at something, something is, is coming at them and they're all uh, frightened and, and terrified of whatever this thing is. Yeah. And, but I notice say, I didn't find that a very meaningful reveal. I didn't get much out of it. Did you? No, get no, something? no. Other than, other than, well, no, no, not from, not from a narrative standpoint. It's nice to see the heroes that they've been talking about for the last three and a half issues. And, 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 the, the point that they are frightened that their mentors, the adults in the situation are scared to death of whatever this thing is. So what, what chance do these teen heroes have up against something that affected their mentors in that way? I did want to point out, so you get that reveal of the, of how the, the adults are reacting. And then you get Jack's face, which his one eye is kind of wider than normal. And the look on his face is almost like surprise. Considering mm-hmm. what is actually happening in that scene, it seemed kind of weird the way that he is, the way his face is shown. So huh. it almost seemed like a, is he somehow sensing what magician has discovered in some way? But that doesn't make much sense. I think more, maybe more it's he's reacting to the grim determination of vigilante's face in the panel at the top of this page, right. which mirrors the the cover as well. I guess I interpreted his face as he's bracing himself to do something he doesn't really want to do, but he knows he has to. Hmm. Okay. Or he feels he has to. But I don't. It's hard to. It's hard to interpret. Yeah. It's. It's just. It was just an odd expression for what to me for what he's about to do. So then uh, we get the next page, which is Magician using his wand to burst that bubble. Right. So what does that mean? Again, I, I wondered if if he has he's trying to affect something in the past. Because he says, uh, we still need them. The entire world needs them. So he's obviously trying to release them and s- from something. Uh, it's not clear what exactly is going on here yet. Right. To me, the counterpoint of his monologue, which is still his really long message to his mother on the phone, is a counterpoint to what's happening with Jack and Vigilante. Mm. You know, because he's saying, I wanted to say goodbye, and we really need heroes. It seems to make it seem even more painful and more horrible that it seems like the last heroes left on Earth have just been defeated and are being killed. Mm. Good point. I actually hadn't thought of it that way. That's that's a really good way to think of it. Yeah, that make, that just makes my appreciation of of these scenes uh, even even more uh, more so. I, I it, it, that's really good. I like that thought. The next page, there's just uh, the result. Um, uh, looks like magician is being blown backwards from the explosion, and and Jack gets closer and closer to the murder he's about to commit. And the final panel on that page is just that close-up of his face. We don't see his eye, right? That which is, is that's telling. It's a bit of an odd shot. In fact. It is, but but it I think it makes appropriate sense. You know, he's he has made that decision. He's committed to this action to kill his friend, and you right. see the the flash of his gun, and you see the the blood splatter there. And it's a counterpoint. It's the same shot from a different point of view, in a sense. Exactly. Yeah. Thank you for showing that. That looks good. Less disturbing point of view, I guess, but a more emotional one in a way. And at the time, I interpreted that as as Jack letting go of any pretense to being a hero. Now, of course, now I interpret it differently, having read later issues. But mm, okay. at the time I read this issue, I thought Jack is letting go of having been a hero or anything and just becoming selfish or, you know, serving for his own survival and nothing else. Mm -hmm. That was my interpretation before I knew some more things about the story that (laughs) I didn't know when I read this. And then finally we get to the last, the last page of this issue. Uh, We get the juxtaposition of the two bloodied heroes, vigilante who has been shot through the head. He's presumably dead. And a magician who is bleeding from all orifices in his ha- in his head, including um, his eyes, which yeah. is yeah, yeah. So is he dead as well? 
and, right. and uh, of course with the overlay of of his message tell dad i love you both i wish i could tell you all this a different way i i'm just afraid i'm afraid of what you'll say to me now you'll how you'll look at me it's easier if i just leave a message and this again we get another another kind of gut punch you never listen to your messages <laughs> so he's he's doing this knowing that most likely they will never hear it right or or at least assuming that that his parents will never hear it so how awful uh, is that relationship then yeah so i i feel that if I remember correctly, it's going to be several more issues before we learn anything of what magician was really up to. Yeah. So it was kind of just in terms of reading this issue, it felt like just some special effects with an interesting monologue about his life. But we do learn later, I believe, what he was up to. Yeah. Yep. Again, a final note on this issue I have in my notes here. I took, so the issue long message that magician left for his mom accentuates this helplessness, this despair that he's feeling, being able, unable to communicate, and also by extension to succeed in the task. And uh, this issue ends on a major downer. And of course, like I said, uh, this, so this, the, the first trade collects the first four issues. So, so um, this is the first arc of the story. Uh, the first half of it, and then we wouldn't get another issue, like I said, for six months after issue number four. So that's kind of a long time to wait for. Uh, and then after that issue, I think then the wait became even longer. Right? Yes, yeah, uh, much longer. Which is interesting. Why why they decided to uh, break up the the trade in that way? Why not collect issue five with that? I don't know. Other than it's an eight issue series, so it makes sense to do four right. and four. However, considering what they did with that final issue, which they did not collect into the trade, which I think is the wrong decision, but... <laughs> they didn't collect it into the trade. Okay. Yeah. I, uh, I find that even more interesting. Um, but at the same time, I, I can also see why they would want to get the first four issues out in trade form to keep... Uh, and that came out in November. So about a, about a month after the fourth issue came out. So November 2012. So they wanted to uh, keep the, the 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 book alive in the you know in the minds of of those of us who were reading it. I assume they thought when issue five came out that they were going to be back on their regular schedule, and they thought the trade would help promote the series. As Possibly, do at yeah. Valiant, I mean uh, Image, but that did not happen. I have to say, by the time I got to the end of these four issues, I thought, wow, they've pretty much shot their load <laughs> you've pretty much given us so <laughs> many twists and turns and unexpected stuff i can't see how they can top this at this point yeah that's where i was kind of left you know wow waiting for future issues i was thinking what other mind-blowing reveals are they going to give us after this after all these gut-wrenching uh, uh turning points and and the reveals that they've done it's like wow what else is coming? I like, and my my reaction to that was bring it on because I want to. I want more of this. And this will be good for people reading it in a trade because I just it is so dense. I think even month to month, not to mention with delays, it's hard to connect all the dots. I see. Oh, so very true. Normal. Yeah. So in general, Damien, how do you? Let's let's kind of answer Travis's question about uh, that he that he provided on Twitter about uh, delays and and how it impacts our reading and also whether we stick with creators that have such such long breaks between issues. Now, of course, I don't know if Travis knew this. I, I'm sure he does, but because he's because he is speaking to a larger issue. But in particular, uh, as we talked about, Rusty Drake's kids got in that accident, and that's why right. they they wanted to hold off because. Yeah. Uh, Rusty Drake is such an integral part of this book, and we've, you and I have talked, we've made comments about how great the coloring is, and and how much of an impact right. the color is to the story itself. And uh, let me let me find, I have a, I have a quote here. Let me find it. I've got too many pieces of paper uh, that I have. Uh, here we go. This is from Eric Jones. They, he says he puts uh, he meaning Rusty puts a huge effort into every single page, and if we brought in a pinch hitter, 
just about anybody else's work would stand out like a sore thumb against the rest of the series. And I, I can totally see that. That isn't to say that there aren't other brilliant colorists out there, <laughs> but Rusty's work is so unique that it would be impossible to replace him. How do you feel about that? I mean, I think they made the right, right choice as a team of creators to stay true to themselves. I do think it seriously hurt this book. I bet there's a lot of people who never even knew when it came, when the next issue came out and just forgot about it. I had it on my poll and had sort of forgotten about it by the time, say, issue six came out. And I told myself I would go back and reread the past issues, but I don't think I did. I think I just went ahead and read it and hoped for the best. And I think it did kind of hurt my reading experience. Mm -hmm. Now we have it finished, though. It's You can reread your issues or read it in trade, and I think it you know, is worth it in the long term. But I think it... I think they probably, you know, had this come out monthly from the beginning, this might still be going, I think, in some form. Well, that, it's more a, ideas for stories. It might have become an ongoing rather than a limited series. Yeah, so it's it interesting you bring that up. up. Might have built up popularity as the first two trades came out and then people had another issue to buy and stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because I was I was really surprised when, when I first saw, I saw a tweet from somebody uh, probably uh, Landry Walker talking about how the the eighth and final issue was was completed. They just needed to you know do the coloring and, and stuff like that. Or he had, maybe it was talking about his script. It was all done, and and I and I I kind of freaked out. I because I, I I tweeted back at him and said I had no idea it was only eight issues because I, I thought it was an ongoing series. It was just taking a while to get to get out. So I so yeah I don't know what you brought up there. Maybe maybe if if they had a better response, if they'd come out more regularly, maybe they would have continued it on. But given, because I the episode that I released, I talked about uh, the December 2015 advanced solicitations and how it seemed like several books in those solicitations were suddenly the final issues of you know a finite number, whereas before they were never indicated as being a limited series in any fashion, at least, at least by numbers. Right. So, and that's the image strategy, which I think now other people may be following too, to not tell you when it's a limited series. However, we can't know if they planned it to be an original series or realized once it was taking six months per issue that they would have to make it a limited series. Well, here's the thing. Um, the response I got from Landry Walker when I when I sent that, that tweet, or maybe it was Eric Jones. I think maybe it was Eric Jones. I was told that it was always intended to be an eight-issue series. Uh-huh. But I didn't want it to be. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which is kind of why I want to do I wanted to do this focus on this series because I, you know, in my own small, teeny tiny way. <laughs> I wanted I want to generate some interest in it maybe as if I have any influence whatsoever on anything but uh you know just just get more of the message out of this how great this book really is and and uh, uh maybe you know down the road because they like like you mentioned before they did talk about Landry Walker and Eric Jones in that in that interview that there were possibilities of other stories there were two specifically that Landry talked about how they could do he wanted to do a, a focus on Yushimi and Micro Tokyo. Right. And I would uh, love that. Yeah. And he needed to try and convince or at least coerce Eric Jones into doing a funny animal version <laughs> of this book where you have cat Maybe vigilante parrot or something. <laughs> a, yeah. And, and Jack Rabbit fearless, you know, along those along those lines. I would love that too. <laughs> I guess I'm less excited for that one. Oh, okay. But Anyway, I would read it. Yeah. But yeah, I think that they they may just have been gone so long that I don't know if this book can even in trade pick back up and find an audience, but maybe it can. Mm -hmm. At the very least, you know, the the trades are out there, the issues are out there digitally. You can you can probably find the back issues right. uh, easily enough. And if they ever wanted to come back to this, I think 
it would be very easy to do so. And all, all image would have to do is re-release the trades to help drum up uh, right. interest in, in right. what's coming. And it's well worth it. Everybody listening or watching out there, this series is so worth it. You need to give it a shot. And uh, this creative see. team needs to do more. Oh more, yeah. Uh, comics, I think. Yeah. I actually I have comics. I actually have the trade collection of the Supergirl series that they did. Uh -huh. I haven't read it. <laughs> they the ones uh, about her in junior high? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I have read it. It's very oh, good. Yeah. Okay. But I read it with a six year old. <laughs> yes. And see, I actually bought it for my 11 year old granddaughter who likes Supergirl. And mm -hmm. I thought it'd be a perfect thing for her to. She, she kind of, she kind of likes comics. She's not like my nine year old granddaughter, Madison, who loves comics. She loves comics. But I, I try to, I'm trying to foster that interest in both right. of them. So I, I got her the Supergirl trade. That Supergirl and Cosmic Adventures in the eighth grade, I think it was. Right, right. Cosmic. And and so I, I I do plan on reading that. And like I said earlier in the episode, I I do plan to go find those uh, Batman Brave and the Bold issues that Landry and uh, Eric Jones uh, worked on because I, I had no idea they'd done that. So so is that the kids Brave and the Bold, like the version based on the comic? I mean the cartoon. I, I assume so. Regular Brave and the Bold. No, I. I I, cause I have those brave and the bold, the regular brave and the bold issues. And that's, they're not part of that. So I assume it's the, based on the, 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 uh, cartoon that was out, which was, which, which was a great cartoon anyway itself. So mentally I'm having trouble making the leap from that cosmic adventures in the eighth grade to this stuff. Oh um, yeah. If I went back, I could see some connections, but it, at the time I thought, oh, this is fun, but I didn't even note who the creators were or any, you know, it's one of those things where you just kind of read it with your kid and it, it was a good time, but. Well, yeah. In, until I read this, this series, Danger Club, I, you know, I, I don't know if I knew really who Landry Walker and Eric Jones were, right? Uh, but they definitely are on my radar now. So anything else that they do that they want to work on, I'm, I'm, I'm all for it. Even if it's not more Danger Club. Right. I'm going to check it out. Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, and I guess we'll save our total overview thoughts for after we read the next four issues in the next exciting episode. <laughs> yes, uh, but let me let me ask you one more question before we uh, before we depart. Oh wait, I want two more things. I wanted to uh, read the the descriptions of the major characters in that this interview that I referenced earlier. Okay, um, and. Because it does, it does. Like I said, it does. It does spoil a few background bits for the, some of these characters. Or maybe, maybe, do we want to do that? Yeah, I'll, I'll just do it. Let, let, let the chips fall where they may, as they say. So, Kid Vigilante. Guess what? He's a clone of his mentor, Red Vengeance. He has no powers, but is a merciless hand-to-hand -hand combatant with a genius-level intellect. So I, I maybe I was right. Kid Victory is a clone, but but not the clone that I thought he was. Right. Which is I'm I don't know if I like that idea or not. I, I kind of like the idea of, of them being um, uh, twin sons of of Red Vengeance right. and and doing the whole uh, father son crime fighting bit thing. Uh, Jack Fearless, the original teenage sidekick from the early 40s. Fearless was frozen in a cryogenic device after a bomb destroyed his arms, legs, and one eye. And now he's been rebuilt with cybernetic appendages. So you were right about that. Uh, the magician draws his power from the depths of interdimensional space where reality is in a state of flux. So that kind of ties into what we were talking about with him. Yoshimi Anamoto. Wait a minute, Anamoto, isn't that, wasn't that the, the, the uh, robot creator? She the daughter of the creator? That yeah. makes a lot of sense. Here it is. Um, I'm looking it up real quick. Professor Takumi Anamoto. They're probably about to tell you that. Yeah. Uh, the diminutive five inch tall. So yeah, there you go. She's five inches. Pilot of the stolen jumbo bot, Robot 9 is an outcast of the isolationist city-state of Microtokyo. Okay, that explains a little, little bit more about Microtokyo, if it's isolationist. And city-state. Uh, Ladybug, we already know what they say about her. She's the sidekick to Insectra. And finally, Apollo, last of the race known as the Olympians. He's now the most powerful being on the planet. 
there is a, as, as Jones says, there's more than a slight nod at Jack Kirby's fourth world design wise for, uh, with his character. Did you pick up on that? No, <laughs> no I didn't either. But then again, I'm not, I'm not, uh, I'm not well versed. And we talked about this on Twitter not too long ago. Right. I'm not as well versed on Kirby DC, especially DC Kirby stuff. But I am. <laughs> so now I feel, <laughs> I wouldn't feel bad about that. I, I don't know. I, Maybe, Actually, maybe you know, it's Vesuvius, a jump. Vesuvius, that one panel of Vesuvius seemed very Kirby like. Yes, I would agree with that totally. And now I'm looking back at him. Yeah, I don't really see it, but I was kind of thinking because I, I remember loving the issues of the Teen Titans where George Perez was drawing all the Olympian gods. Oh, yeah, early on in the series. In a, or, yeah, quite early on, they got involved in a big battle with Apollo, in fact. Yes. Apollo was on one of the right. <laughs> a much oh more God. grown up Apollo. <laughs> <laughs> right. Oh wow. Well, Maybe they, they own they owe Wolfman in Paris a little bit of money. <laughs> I, I think they might. Yeah, these these homages, these connections are a little more uh, <laughs> direct than maybe I thought at first. So and they do talk about in that in one interview i don't remember if it was the podcast that we talked that we mentioned or some other interview i've read i read like half a dozen things <laughs> preparing for this so i don't remember which one it was but they did talk about how t uh the new teen titans was a huge influence on them because that's th those are the comics that they read they're you know they're just like us they grew up reading the new teen titans they have a this this love for this the that series those characters the wolfman and perez stuff in particular so it makes a lot of sense Two more things. I, I said I said that already, but I, I thought of something else. I wanted to mention, because I had it in my notes, but I forgot to mention it as we were going through the issues. I did notice that Eric Jones's art from the first issue, like going into like the third issue, he seems a lot more comfortable with the characters and how he is presenting them. Because there's there's right. a there's I'm thinking of a particular panel in issue one where Kid Vigilante is kind of he, his look isn't as defined, I guess, as it appears in later issues. And so I, I just thought it was interesting because I, I've, I also had that same, going back to the new Teen Titans, I, I also had that same reaction to how Perez portrayed those characters early on as compared to how it ended up later on in the series. Right. I so, remember thinking that too when I used yeah. to. At yeah. some so, point, they suddenly seem more lifelike or something. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, and then finally, I wanted to ask you, Damien, you get the $10,000 question. <laughs> what, what do you think that danger club based on these first four issues is contributing to the superhero genre in general? You have 30 seconds. Go. No. <laughs> <laughs> well, if the other creators are reading it, I think it might make them think about what statements they would like to make about, uh, sub, uh, blah, I was going to say subtitles, sidekicks. <laughs> mm -hmm. I, I guess I feel like it follows in the tradition of the Alan Moore sort of both breaking things down and building them back up in different ways and the, the intricacy and density of an Alan Moore type of storytelling style. Mm -hmm. So I feel that it, that it's a, a very strong entry in the thread that leads out for me from Alan Moore. That's, uh, that's the best I can answer that question as you throw it out at the moment. I thought it was a very good answer, actually. I, I, along similar lines, uh, although I, I wasn't making the Alan Moore connection, but just, um, just the, the, the more um, quote unquote realistic portrayal of of teen sidekicks in a world and and that is taken almost verbatim from uh one of the descriptions about the series you know what if what if superheroes were in the real world i don't know that this series actually addresses that in a in a good way i don't take this series so far as what happens if superheroes were in the real world i mean that's that's definitely more Alan Moore Watchmen territory, mm -hmm. but it is, but it is definitely 
more realistic in the portrayal of the violence and and not just not just the violence but but the the result of the violence you know because we've talked a lot about the blood the buckets of blood that <laughs> goes on in the series but yeah i mostly it was it was uh the the focus on on teen superheroes and what what that could mean how they could be portrayed it is not just all hijinks with with the the adult superhero mentor it's not all teen teen angst and you know soap opera esque type storytelling, although that's part of it. I mean, that, these are all elements that, that that they're playing with, but they're not focused on one particular thing. So they're taking all these tropes and uh, uh, past story ideas and mixing them up. It's in in a, in a way, it's very. Um, uh, oh gosh, I'm blanking on the guy's name. Who did uh, Naked Lunch? Oh, uh, William Burroughs. Burroughs, yeah, kind of the cut that, the, the cut up technique. And, and I, I'm making a, a huge leap here, I know, but 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 taking all these things and kind of cutting them up and making these connections together and seeing how it all falls out together, I think that's 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 the best contribution that this story so far is making is is uh, mushing all this stuff together and seeing what comes out the other end. Ooh, that that sounded grosser than I intended. Uh, <laughs> There you go. Oh, final question for you. Uh, well, no, no, we, we already answered that. I was going to ask you, do you want to see more of the Danger Club universe? I think I think we both said yes on that. So, I would love if someone if they like just did a special uh, annual that was actually a old Silver Age version yes. of the Danger Club, like a whole issue. Yes, I yes, I have that in my notes too. Uh, the the yesteryear stories, the the funny animal one we talked about, um, more background, the history. Yeah. Give give me a yeah give me a whole a whole uh, annual like you say of, of of the yesteryear stuff and I'm I I will buy the crap out of that book. <laughs> <laughs> so, and it okay, could be full of Easter eggs, I'm sure. Oh yeah, yeah, touching you know making connections to things that we already know that's coming up and you know then you know then it becomes poignant and right. I I just I just think there's a lot of just a lot of depths and layers to this that. Uh, even more than what we've talked about could be made and we're probably missing stuff. You know what? And so here we are. We're going to, unless you have any final thoughts, Damien, we're going to, we're going to do the, the lead out here. Yeah. I, all my further thoughts will be saved for the next episode. Okay. Created in time for the next yeah. episode. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. So I'm really curious what uh, anybody who's, who's watched the video or is listening to the audio podcast episode coming up you know if you've read this series you know what what connections did you make what connections did you make that we missed uh going through this because i'm i'm sure that i missed a lot of things because there's a lot of stuff going on in this there's the, the story is just chock full it's packed full of, of of uh interesting uh superhero teenage goodness um that sounds even sounds kind of dirty too i i'm going to stop saying these things now uh and and implore people to go ahead and uh provide feedback uh, and you could do so uh, by emailing me at longboxreview at gmail.com. You can also just uh, chat me up on Twitter at Longbox Review or leave comments at the blog, longboxreview.com. Damien, tell the fine folks out there where they can find your wonderful videos. The channel name is Sleepy Reader 666 on YouTube. Um, you can also follow me on Twitter as Sleepy Reader 666, where I love to chat with people. Okay, before we go, <laughs> I have to ask Damien. Can you can you tell us the origin story of Sleepy Reader six six six? What why why that why that particular name? Well, as you may or may not recall, when you have young children, you often don't get to sleep much. Oh yes. And uh, my daughter's now seven, but I guess she was about three and a half when I started the channel, and I still was not recovered from the lack of sleep. And um, so the name Sleepy Reader popped into my head and then YouTube insisted on a number. And since my real name is Damien, ah, the, okay. the omen came out. <laughs> Every annoying little twerp, speaking of teenagers, would walk up to me and point to my forehead and say, where's the 666? <laughs> uh, so I uh, took that number to my bosom and decided 666 was my number. <laughs> see, you, you took something that uh, someone was trying to to uh, have power over you and you you took it in and, and, and made it your own. Exactly, exactly. 
as as like, as, as a teenage superhero would do. It means I worship Satan or anything like that. <laughs> I like comic books about Satan, but other than that, no. ah, okay, all right. So, are you looking? Uh, um, we're going off on tangent now, but are you looking forward to the uh, the new uh, Lucifer series from Vertigo? Speaking of Satan. The TV series, no, but I love the comic book. If they're having a new comic book, that well, be- that that's just it. They, the uh, in the December solicitations, they they are soliciting the 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 next volume of Lucifer. Uh huh. I loved the original series, so if they're bringing that back, that would be awesome. Yeah, I'm. I'm. Me too. <laughs> All right. I mean, it was. Yeah, it was. I liked it better than Sandman in some ways. Which oh is wow, religious. But. Yeah, I. Uh, between you and me, <laughs> yeah, between you and me and everybody else that's listening to this, uh, I did too. Okay. <laughs> anyway, uh, Damien, thank you so much for joining me today. Uh, we've talked longer than I anticipated, so I apologize about that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I hope, though, that maybe you might have guessed that, given the the conversations that Travis and I have sometimes on here. I did not anticipate, but it was fun. Okay, well, I pre- I appreciate your patience with me, and uh, sticking around and and uh, pointing out all the wonderful things you did about uh, Danger Club issues one through four. And I'm really looking forward to talking with you in the near future about the back half of this story because there are some amazing. Uh, plot developments going on with what uh, with the series and how it ends, especially the 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 two issue ending that they do. Uh-huh. So I'm really looking forward to that conversation with you. I think we may have a whole different set of comics to compare it to. Yes, yes. All right, that's it. Uh, thank you all for watching. Thank you everyone for listening. Go read some comics. Have some fun. Bye bye. <laughs>